Hello, everyone, and welcome to MariaDB Server Cloud Minifest. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about MariaDB Sky SQL, a new database as a service offering directly from MariaDB. But first things first, I want to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Rob Hedgepeth, and I work on the developer relations team at MariaDB Corporation. And basically what that means is I try to do anything and everything I can to help improve the experience of using MariaDB and MariaDB products. If after this session you have any questions, criticisms, or feedback for myself, please feel free to reach out to, at, to me at robh at mariadb.com. You can follow me on Twitter at probablyrealrob, or you can check out some of the code samples that I've gone ahead and uploaded to GitHub at our hedgepath. Now, let's go ahead and dive into it and talk about MariaDB Sky SQL. Well, what is MariaDB Sky SQL. For that, I like to start with a very simple example. And of course, you can see that I've got this yellow bucket. We've got some files pointing or picture files pointing into this yellow bucket. This is really meant in the simplest sense to represent what a database is. It's simply at the very lowest level, a way that we can be able to persist information or persist data. And of course, if you're attending this Minifest, you understand that, of course, MariaDB is a database. And of course, it's a lot more complex than that, but we're going to try to build off of this going forward. Now, to understand Sky SQL, really, I'm going to put just a very simple image behind it, which is this picture of a cloud. Now, the cloud itself is really here to help us represent a database as a service, right? This ability to abstract away a database and rather than having to take a product and install it or configure it directly onto some machine that we may have access to or even a, a database in, or sorry, a machine in the cloud, we can actually be able to utilize a database as a service. So spinning up a service that's available someplace else and be able to use that. And that's what Sky SQL is. MariaDB Sky SQL is a database as a service provided directly by MariaDB Corporation. Well, why would you use a database as a service? And for some of you, there may be varying reasons for this, but at the highest level, it's an abstraction, right? It helps us eliminate certain things such as the the requirement to provision or allocate resources or machine, whether that be virtually or a physical machine, in order to be able to contain this database, right? Having to go through the process of setting up that machine or virtualized environment and then be able to install, right? So download, install MariaDB database and then be able to configure it to the needs of our solutions or applications. And even getting into the details of how we set up security of not only how you can access the database, but then once you have access to the database, what kind of authorization is in play um, to allow you to be able to do certain things within the database environment itself. Instead, the dream here is that on the left-hand side, you can kind of you know, abstract this away as any solution, right? There's some code on there, but it, it's some kind of solution that you as an engineer um, are trying to, to create. And it, you know, uses a database. In this case, we're using MariaDB. Now, the dream here for a database as a service is that we, you know, we get this easy button and then poof, a database exists. Now, of course, we all know that it's not necessarily that simple because as engineers and then per the requirements of a lot of our solutions, we need a certain amount of levers and buttons and, and really some knobs that allow us then to be able to tune or configure the database settings in a way that will actually work for what we're trying to create. Which brings us into MariaDB in the cloud. Now, MariaDB in the cloud as you may already know, already exist, right? And you likely think of, you know, some, some likely solutions that you may or may not have already used at this point. And these are what I'm classifying as third party and really the first generation or first attempt at a database as a service using MariaDB. And it, it's, you know, they're very viable and it's something that you can still use today. You can use them in RDS, right? So Azure, or sorry, Amazon 
relational database service. You can use them in Azure databases. Uh, and, and MariaDB is available, right, in, in these cloud service providers. And they allow you, of course, to use MariaDB server. You can use them for a variety of different use cases. But all in all, there, there is self-service design that allow you to spin up and, and use MariaDB service bits uh, to create a MariaDB service that's available to you in the cloud. Now, where MariaDB SkySQL comes into play is that MariaDB SkySQL, just the highest level, the biggest difference, is that it uses the MariaDB Enterprise Server bits. And of course, when you use Enterprise Server bits, then you get a lot of the benefits of enterprise-grade functionality, such as you know, being able to get that on-premises reliability, uh, enterprise grade governance, the custom, the customability, customability, the customizableness, bunch of words that I'm just making up at this point, but the ability to customize the MariaDB database. And not only that, it's a fully managed service provided by MariaDB Corporation. And with that, it comes with a certain amount of expertise and experience that you get from longtime MariaDBers and people who have used MariaDB in the field um, with a ton of experience. Now, enough with the, the marketing slide in here. Let's get into the actual architecture bits of what MariaDB SkySQL is. Now, at the highest level, as we see here at the top, you'll see that I've got this icon for ServiceNow. ServiceNow is a platform as a service that we're using to be able to provide the front end or the user interface that you as an engineer, as a user of MariaDB SkySQL can go into to be able to organize the databases, right? So be able to do everything from inventory management to manage the configuration of the database itself, as well as the workflow that's involved in setting up and maintaining MariaDB. Now, that's a pretty abstracted or um, pretty high level example of this. Of course, we'll dive into actually seeing what the portal looks like. But underneath the hood, what's happening here is that MariaDB is provided to you through different cloud providers, such as Google Cloud and AWS currently. And then we're working on Microsoft Azure in the future. But all of the cloud providers utilize a SkySQL control plane. And that control plane then exposes the ability for ServiceNow in the portal, ultimately you as the user, to be able to set up and manage your databases, which exist as a SkySQL service instance. Now, we're able to do this using Kubernetes, as I mentioned before. And if you're not familiar with Kubernetes, um, I highly recommend you go out, do some quick Googling, go check out some of the resources that are available online for Kubernetes. But at the highest level, what this allows us to do is take the Kubernetes API in a very ubiquitous or very standardized way and then be able to manage the database instances using the different Kubernetes engine services on the different cloud providers in a uniform way. And this allows us then to combine some of the aspects from Kubernetes that take advantage of cloud native capabilities, as well as um, something called self-healing, and combine that with features like MariaDB MaxScale, which is a very useful database proxy specifically made and tailored for MariaDB database servers. All in all, what you need to know from this slide is that we've provided a very standardized way across the different clouds to allow you to be able to use, quickly use MariaDB Enterprise as a service. Of course, there's a lot more to it. And if you have more questions or want to get a better understanding from a technical perspective of MariaDB SkySQL, I highly recommend you go out to MariaDB.com and check out the enterprise documentation on MariaDB SkySQL. But what we want to do now is transition to actually taking a look at MariaDB SkySQL. Because rather than go into more slides and dive deeper into the architectural capabilities or some of the service offerings, I want you to go ahead and get a quick look at what MariaDB SkySQL is and how you'd be able to use it if you were actually signing up and taking advantage of it right now. So for that, I want to go ahead and jump over into a new browser window where I've already navigated to mariedb.com slash skyview. And of course, that resolves to 
product slash Sky SQL slash getting started. And it, this is all in an effort to have a landing page for MariaDB Sky SQL. Now, when you first get to that page, you're going to see that, of course, it's going to provide you with an overview of Sky SQL. Um, you've got some videos which allow you to, to step through the process of how you would set up and then be able to connect to Sky SQL. You're going to be able to see some of the features, the customization possibilities for Sky SQL, as well as some pricing uh, and some of that stuff. But what we want to look at here is actually the process of jumping into the Sky SQL portal, right? We want to take a look at what Sky SQL looks like so it give us a better idea of how we'd be able to use it. And for that, we're going to go down to this Try Now button. Now, if it was your first time coming into this page, what you'd be prompted with is, you, you know, you'd go ahead and create a MariaDB ID, so an account with MariaDB ID, MariaDB, and then you would be go through a couple of steps of registering the fact that you want to sign up with SkySQL. I've already done that, and so I'm just going to click the Try Now, and it's going to take us directly into the SkySQL user interface, which, again, is powered by ServiceNow, a platform as a service. Now, when I click try now, it's going to take me directly to cloud.mariadb.com slash SkySQL. And this is the portal that I've been talking about where you can go and set up a new MariaDB database service instance, so new databases that you can utilize from your workstation or any other workstation. And when you first get in there, you're actually going to get sent to the screen, which is going to prompt you to launch a service. Now, when you first enter this, you're going to see that you have a couple of options here. Um, from transactional, which is going to allow you to use your standard OLTP um, instances of MariaDB. You have the ability to use an analytic service, which is going to use something called columnar storage, um, which uses MariaDB Column Store, which is a particular pluggable storage engine that you can use with MariaDB. You have the ability to combine those, right? So you can use OLTP as well as something called OLAP, right, where you can combine transactional data with your analytical data in something called hybrid transactional analytical processing, or as we see here, HTAP. And that allows you to combine the best of both worlds there. And then at the bottom, you can see that we have something called distributed SQL. And that has been provided as a scalable or an elastic way to handle massive amounts of information in an extremely elastic and scalable manner using a MariaDB pluggable storage engine called Expand. Now, when you get to this page, you can click on one of these, and what you're going to be prompted with whenever you want to launch a service is you're going to have the ability to change some of the information, right? Some of the things that you expect to be able to change. First and foremost, you have the ability to choose one of the two supported service or cloud service providers in Google Cloud or AWS. So you'll select one of those, and from there, you can select a region or regions that you want to have this MariaDB service instance, just depending on, you know, maybe if you have localization requirements um, or something like, like that. And from there, you want to select a topology. And this allows you to be able to set up, in this case, from a transactional service, the ability to create a standalone instance of the database service. So maybe you want to create something that you, you know, you run your development environment or your testing environments um, to being able to set up high availability using a primary replica setup or even clustering with Galera. After that, you'll have the ability to set up or allocate resources that exist in the cloud by determining an instance size, you know, where you pick both the CPU or the virtual CPUs that you want to use, uh, as well as the amount of memory. And of course, then you'll get a, a dollar amount that tell you exactly how much that costs. From there, you can allocate certain storage sizes. You can pick the server version of MariaDB, as well as probably the most important part for being able to actually utilize this service, which is give it a name. From there, you'll just launch a service. Now, I've already launched a couple of services, so let's go ahead and leave this page and take a look. Now, when you come into the services that you've already created, of course, you're going to be presented with information of whether or not the service is up and running. You're going to have the information as far as what you named it, as well as the version that you chose and the types of resources that you've allocated to this service instance. Now, when you click into this service, what's going to be important here is that as well as, the, you know, as with the information that you already know about, which is, you know, a certain amount of you know, data that you've allocated or, you know, the, the actual 
instant sizes that you've you've set aside for or you've picked out for the particular service. You're also going to get information once it's a spinning instance of things that will help you actually connect to it, such as the address for the full fully qualified domain name, as well as the port that you can access the service instance. From there, you'll have to add your IP or a range of IPs. So they'll give the access to the machines trying to access MariaDB Sky SQL. And then you can show credentials by clicking the show credentials button. And it's going to give you the username, the password, as well as some prompts for information to allow you to connect to MariaDB Sky SQL. You have the ability, once you've spun up an instance, to be able to customize your configuration using the configuration manager here that I've clicked on the left-hand side. And by default, of course, you're not gonna be required to fill in any configuration. That is part of the ease of use or the simplicity that comes with using a database as a service. You're already gonna have some default configuration. But in MariaDB Sky SQL, you have the ability to get in and change the system variables, right? So if you want to get in and configure your database instance to, to your workload or to your solutions, you have that capability. On the, continue on this left-hand side here, you can see that you have the ability to check out the tech preview of something called workload analysis. And what workload analysis allows you to do is it takes into account the information and, and really the activity on your database, right, to help establish workload trends over a course of time. Now, traditionally, we've probably thought of workloads as being write intensive or read intensive, uh, maybe a combination of the two. But over time, we've realized that workloads are more complex than that. They can change hour to hour, day to day, week to week, right? And they can have different peak times at night or on the weekends. And what workload analysis allows us to do is utilize the power of machine learning to help us optimize exactly how we're using the resources and be able to plan for how we can use and, and capitalize on those resources, both in a time management and a cost-effective way in the future. So if you'd like to check that out, just go ahead and click away on workload analysis. Now, getting back into our portal, you also have the ability to check out real-time monitoring using the monitoring solution for MariaDB Sky SQL. So when you click it, it's gonna prompt a new window, it's gonna open up a new tab, and then you're gonna see your services. Now, once your service is here, you can actually click into your services and you can see different live or real-time monitoring information available within this UI. You can check out exactly the type of SQL commands that you're running. You can check out more information on the database, such as open connections, table locks. Um, you can check more detailed information about the queries. So you can see you know, what queries are, are running most often. You can check out your queries per second and your transactions per second. You can even look at the utilization of resources on the machines within SkySQL services, right? So you can check out CPU load or memory issues or memory usage. And of course, you have the ability to check out the MariaDB SkySQL documentation directly from the SkySQL portal. And this just will put you into MariaDB.com slash product slash sky sql slash docs which will give you a full set of documentation for mariadb sky sql and i highly recommend after this session if you'd like to know more information just head directly out to the docs you can access them completely free um, you can check out any of the information and for those of you like myself that like to dive directly into the code or into the examples this is a great place to do that and lastly one of the benefits of using a fully managed database as a service directly from the source of MariaDB Corporation is that you're going to have expert support, right? So you're going to have support directly at your fingertips to allow you to reach out and ask questions about your SkySQL database service instance directly integrated into the SkySQL portal itself. And that's really it. That is the quick and dirty of MariaDB SkySQL. Let's go ahead and, and check out these slides here for this last one. For this, I would like to say thank you very much for attending this session. If you would like to learn more about MariaDB SkySQL, please head to mariadb.com 
slash Skyview. There you can find out more of the information such as the capabilities and the features as well as pricing. But if you'd like to go ahead and just from a high level, if you're wanting and you're interested in checking out MariaDB server and getting started with MariaDB, please go and check out the MariaDB Developer Hub, which is at mariadb.com slash developers. There you can find a bunch of open source solutions and examples, blog posts, tutorials, webinars, videos that will get you started using MariaDB in a variety of different languages, ecosystems, and platforms so that you can go ahead and check out MariaDB. If after all of this, you still have questions, peel please feel free to email us at developers at mariadb.com. You can follow us at mariadb on Twitter, or you can go ahead and check out all of our open source examples, including mariadb server on mariadb-corporation on GitHub. With that, I would like to say thank you very much for attending this session, and I hope you enjoy the rest of mariadb server cloud minifest. Have a great day.